Wait a minute. Yeah? Am I doing the intro? Yeah. Remember the oh, picture? Oh. <laughs> You picked the pick. Me... Damn it! Because <laughs> I thought, because I guessed the, the right one. I thought you went. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> hey guys, Tizer and the Table Flipper here to do another, uh, podcast slash video slash music slash, music cast thing as we've now come to call it um we haven't gotten really many topics yet but we're hoping maybe we can get some from you guys but uh we have w another one uh given to me by my friend um so we're just gonna dive straight into it so that we don't uh do what we did last time <laughs> um so pretty much um a lot of people think that uh metal is more for the uh kind of like emo-y like really sad people or like kind of like metalcore hardcore kind of stuff with a lot of screaming kind of all that kind of stuff so, um so, so we're attacking the genre think? in the same sorry so we're attacking the genre in the same sort of way that some people may like 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 we said last time about how digital doesn't really appeal to us all this sort of electronic buzzy noise is it's all we're sort of like oh it doesn't quite feel like music to us whilst Again, we do respect that. It's not really a thing for us, and I think a lot of people sort of see the same when they, when they hear sort of like metal and screamy, and sometimes they go, oh, it's only emo music. It's not really music. They're just screaming and shouting into the mic, essentially. Like, for instance, even even when they're not screaming, I think this is one of the main arguments I use. Um, I often get called out to, say, Avenged Sevenfold songs. So I'm listening to them. The lead singer Matt, he he he's singing during the, the majority of the songs. There's not much sing, screaming in the later albums. When he's singing, I hear a lot of people going, "Oh, they're just screaming into the mic." He's not actually screaming into the mic. If you <laughs> want to hear him scream into a mic, go and listen to the older stuff. This is the new stuff is just him singing. He has a masculine male voice. I think part of what I blame this on is a lot of people hear a lot of sort of like these these 20 year old male artists now who are just sort of they've got a really sort of lighter softer voice which fits the tone of their genre and yeah like um <clears throat> there's uh sleeping with sirens uh pierce the veil those kind of really high-pitched you know grabbing their crotch to make them sound a little <laughs> bit higher kind of thing but um yeah and yeah go on it's it's just he's 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 got a masculine voice and I think he and he really tries to push that because it drives the power and the, the the tone of the actual genre whereas others adapt their voices and make the most of their voices and other ways of heightening the tone of their voices <laughs> to <Yeah. laughs> suit the tone of their music. Um, yeah, exactly. You hear I think one how old are One Direction now? What eighteen, nineteen, twenty? I have no idea. Something like that. And that is the sort of the mainstream on the radio nowadays, at least over here it is. And I think a lot of people use that as a comparison for what the standard voice is now, whereas it, it isn't. Some people just have a much more gravelly voice. And I think that's one of the main issues I think that I, I come into contact with is not so not necessarily um, that screamo is a bad thing or screaming is a bad thing as we'll get on to afterwards. But what is screaming and what is just singing yeah um <clears throat> to continue on that yeah the difference between screaming and singing i see singing as like well yeah i mean it's singing everybody knows what singing is but um with like the screaming and everything like that it's basically like you're trying to put a more aggressive tone into music without actually you know doing anything harmful with <laughs> with your voice like because it's not really supposed to hurt or anything but like it adds more emotion it adds well, that's what i find anyways it adds more emotion it makes it seem a little bit more like it gets the point across that this is not something to be it's it's not all fun and games but sometimes it is because they're silly like that um yeah they're very 
I find a lot of the bands are actually pretty bipolar when it comes to their music. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're finding a lot of songs as well. Um, and this is something to drive home. I think I'll use my first example here. Psychosocial by Slipknot. Go and listen to, say, the first two minutes of that. It's basically, you'll hear it and you'll think immediately, oh, really, really dark tone um, instrumentals. And then he gets into the lyrics and it's quite, that is screaming. It's not the extent of how far he can scream, but that is that is screaming what he does. And you think, oh, ugh. some people will go, oh, it's screaming. It's, it's not what I want to listen to. It's rubbish. And then you get onto the chorus and it's the complete opposite. He's got an amazing voice. I'm not saying the screaming doesn't prove he has an amazing voice, but he has an amazing voice. And the chorus really drives home that point. And that is where he's actually properly singing. And yeah, like I said, they're very bipolar by that. And I think it tends to sort of... it. Something I heard from somebody a while back is that certain genres you know, will take you through a sort of journey of emotions through their songs. And this kind of, the contrast between screamer and singing tends to do that as well, a different contrast through different emotions. Yeah. Yeah, like, some people just don't like how it sounds, which, I mean, that's fine. Like, like I can listen to pretty much whatever I want in the car with my, with my stepdad, and then my mom's just like, no, none of that. I don't like it. Because just just because she plain just doesn't like the sound, it just sounds kind of gross to her, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, like it is also up to that. But yeah, pretty much, it's basically. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Do you have anything uh, else well, to say while well, I retain myself? Say is that, to be quite <laughs> honest, it, it is. It's like for me, I, I, as I said before, I actually class Slipknot as. That that particular song, which I just mentioned, Psychosocial, I class that. I've I I class that as like the edge of the cliff for me. I'm not that big on screamo. I mean, I can I'm okay with it as long as it's part of a song that <clears throat> excuse me um, involves singing to some extent. But I think I I don't know. I just personally, I don't find that I can really distinguish screaming like the actual lyrics properly. And I I, I don't know. It's probably just me. It's again, it's a taste thing, and it doesn't appeal to me so much. And whereas something like psychosocial where you've got singing and screaming it, you can then start to see a bit more of it. If you like. Yeah. Has the um, train rolled back into the station yet? Kind of. Um, but upon further looking into it, screamo is definitely a genre. Um, Although a lot of people don't seem to want to call it screamo just because, <laughs> because of the broad thing. Like most people would like prefer hardcore or like hardcore punk or post hardcore or easy core or metal core or any kind of core. It's funny like that. Um, but the thing is like, yeah, a lot of people tend to think, well, oh, it sounds angry, must be angry. It's got to be all hate filled. It's going to be really, really, like, just... Dark I don't and depressing and meaningless. Depressing and meaningless. Like, a song, this this is for people who cut themselves. Nah. This song only so, exists to depress me. Yeah, exactly. When... The way I look at it is that all of these songs are basically, like... Everybody keeps a diary. Well, okay, not everybody keeps a diary, but lots of people keep diaries, right? They write down all their thoughts in their diary... They use it as a way to vent to, you know, you see where I'm going with this? Like, yeah. It's, the music is basically their diary. They use it to, you know, help themselves. And then they put it out to the public and they word it in such a way that other people can relate it to themselves. And they'll, they'll be like, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not alone in this. That, you know, these people have gone through it too. I'm kind of, you know makes me yeah. feel better about myself kind of thing yeah it's it's a way of it sounds cliche but it is a way of them expressing themselves in a way and yeah. then allowing other people to share in that yeah pretty much like <clears throat> like when you're when you hear somebody that scream and it's like and it's a lyric like um uh, let's go through my handy dandy list of lyrics of a whopping one song that I already have pulled up. Um, 
what did they say? What did they do? I mean, you can sing. What did they say? What did they do? Or you can scream. What did they say? What did they do? Um, honestly, if you were to say, what did they say? What did they do in like some sort of screamo, you know, angry kind of thing? Cause if you're pretty angry about that. Then I'd say probably screaming would be a pretty good way to do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is lyrics from Demons by Darkest Hour, because I mean that's one with quite a lot of screaming, if not most of it is screaming. But <laughs> definitely. Um, but like the song is all about you know getting over your inner, you know, the demons, the demons that are kind of in your head almost, I guess. And yeah. don't, don't judge these on the face of it, by the way. <laughs> just because we're saying get over your inner demons, we're not immediately advocating, oh, no, it's just for people to cut themselves still. It's, that's, that's not <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> Excuse me. But, like, I think the best way to put it really is... I don't know. When I think people, when they hear screaming, they automatically categorise it as not music. They go, okay, so you've got singing, you've got soft singing, you've got powerful singing, you've got sort of... The, the the masculine sort of gravelly singing that I was on about before with with sort yeah. of revenge type singing and then they go oh it's not singing anymore it's just screaming but it's a way of conveying a different type of emotion like in like in films you've got different kinds of background music to convey different kinds of emotions in, in facial expressions you've got different facial expressions to con- convey different kinds of emotions it's the same in music you've got really sort of soft or like you've got like I don't know country banjo sort of music for really happy jolly sing around the campfire type songs you've got or really sad sit yeah. around the campfire <laughs> crying you know, to a bucket crying to a bucket with the beer and shotgun on the other hand yeah um you've got sort of acoustic soft sort of you've got the sort of like acoustic love songs you've got acoustic oh man city and color all day songs okay that that came out quite that escalated quickly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then you've got the sort of more. I don't. I'm. I'm resisting saying busted, but busted sort of happy electric. I don't want. I don't know really what genre they are. So like pop, punk. Oh, rock, like pop yeah, rock. pop punk, like yeah. all time low kind of stuff. Yeah, and that like again, the super happy, happy. Yeah, I love or that. It can be sort yeah. of like. Lust, not, not lost things um, um, sort of like no can't think of the word can't think of the word um, and then you've got of course things like Metallica or you've got things like Maiden which can be happy it can be sad yeah power metal it's like empowering powerful. yeah just trying to make you feel powerful I guess yeah and then you've got things like Metallica which can and Avenge that can be quite serious but also can be quite joking i guess it's probably the best yeah. place to put it <laughs> little piece of heaven <laughs> yep <laughs> and then you've got the sort of slightly darker stuff and then you start reaching screamo which again conveys much more angry and serious themes but they can still all convey a very happy in a way yeah like um let's see there's a band called chunk no captain chunk <laughs> they have a song called um <clears throat> they do have a song <laughs> in friends we trust there we go ah uh, yes all right and it's a very happy song it's all about your friends being you know good friends and being there for you and you being there for them and how they make you feel all good about yourself and you make them feel good about themselves and then they have stuff where it's like, I am nothing like you. You are like, you're this, I'm this, get away, blah, blah. It's all angry. And then, you know, they're, they're all over the place. But all at the same time, they sound very happy, even though their lyrics can be dark. Or there's the opposite where lots of things sound dark, even though it's pretty happy. Like, um... Uh, what is, uh, I mentioned it earlier, I think, before we started. What was it that sounded very, like, it, it, the lyrics are dark, but it's happy. Like, it has a good meaning to it. Oh. 
No. Brave seize the Heart. day. Seize the day. There we are. Yeah, seize the day by Van Sumfold. It's basically like. It's... Yeah, the lyrics without without the context of like the voice being happy. It's like, well, okay, you can take it this way. Like, well, it's sad. People die. Everything like that. And then you can take it the other way. It's basically like, you know, seize every day, seize every moment. As yeah. I'll pull the lyrics up now. Here we are. Um, see, right, first line: seize the day or die regretting the time you lost. Whereas. The actual tone of the song, when you listen to it, is really quite happy. It's, it's arguably inspirational, the actual tone of the song. It sounds really quite happy. But the actual first couple lines are, Seize the day or die regretting the time you lost. It's empty and cold without you here. Too many people to ache over. Essentially, it's sort of talk about, well, seizing the day. Just grab yeah. them there with both hands. You're not necessarily going to have another day like it. You may not necessarily have another day. Live every day like it's your last day. And so people can interpret that in two different ways. They read the words empty and cold and immediately think, ugh, no, it's another, it's another cut yourself song. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, it's arguably inspirational. Here we are, another Although, line here. I see my vision burn. I feel my memories <clears throat> fade with time. But I'm too young to worry. Again, it's sort of happy. It's saying, seize it while you've got it. Yeah. But then again, there's there's quite a few people I'm sure that don't actually look at the lyrics before listening to the song. That's true. But yeah, so, the tone of it can be happy, but then the lyrics can be sad. But then the lyrics are also happy. You hear things, and I think I think people just have. I'm not saying it's just purely because it's it's partly what I listen to, but I think people just have a bit of a a prejudice to things like scream. I, yeah, I, admit, that I have and, a bit uh, of a prejudice to electronic stuff, but it's like. That's just the way it is. But something like Scream, again, I think it has another prejudice to it, as we explained before. Yeah. And it's kind of like you think about going to like a hardcore metal concert and you think in the mosh pits, everybody's just beating each other up, right? Actually, people are running around, hitting into like running into each other. If somebody knocks another person down, they'll like apologize, help them back up, everything like that. They're they're actually quite nice. <laughs> On... <laughs> They're true like, gentlemen. <laughs> contrary, con- contrary to what a lot of people think, mosh pits are not that violent. Pulls out the monocle and the pipe. <laughs> they're very gentlemanlike people. They're, they're quite gentlemanlike. But yeah, it's it's all about the meaning. Some, uh, granted, there are some screaming screamo songs out there that really don't have any meaning or anything whatsoever, and do genuinely exist because the people want to kill themselves, probably. But the majority has meaning like most music it has meaning exactly. I mean, like, like you said um last time that's that song um you suffer yeah <laughs> it does have meaning to it but who knows what it is you just have to interpret it yeah in the and then there's way. and then there's bands like slayer like there's one there's another thing like um a lot of people think that metal is a lot for like satanist kind of stuff Everything like that. Slayer, all right? Their lead singer is a devout Christian. He's openly, like, he goes to church every Sunday, everything like that. What do they sing about? It's like death and, like, concentration camps and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, they have a song where it just says, Hail Satan in it. Yeah. Or, no, no, they don't. No, I'm thinking about a different band. Um, but, like, I mean, straight out, he says, it's only an act. It's... They do it because they love it, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, like, not all of them are... I mean, are like, like, Iron Maiden, when they yeah. released their album Number of the Beast, which one one song, Number of the Beast, is about a guy who wakes up and he gets pulled into this ritual to the devil, in, in a nutshell, ritual to the devil, based off the, the, the biblical verse um, yeah. in Revelations. And they actually got banned from playing in Chile in 1992 because of basically the Catholic Church culture labeled them as satanists what they didn't do was interpret the song the song actually stems from a nightmare the bassist steve harris had that's all it was it was just basically a story made out of a a nightmare he'd had and they just developed the biblical verse to go with it that's all it was they they're not satanists that i mean nico mcbrain the drummer he um about five or six years ago became a born-again christian and a couple of the others are christian None of them are. Yeah. Nobody is a Satanist. Sat- <laughs> Satanists don't actually worship the devil, funnily enough. That's how far it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
the actual satanic religion isn't worshiping the devil and it's i'm not going to go into that now but <laughs> yeah let's not let's not just, start this <laughs> just putting it out there and again going into the meanings again so like i said that song there has meaning and if you go to an, like another revenge song critical acclaim when you listen to that it sounds very it sounds violent i'd say yeah. instrumentally it sounds violent and then the first line, shush, quiet, you might piss somebody off. Again, it sounds violent. I won't go into oh, the rest of the lines. Especially when, he, especially when he's, you know, shh, be quiet, you might piss somebody off. Yeah. And <laughs> then he, and then the next line again includes another expletive, and it just keeps going. And yeah. then the chorus is entirely s- sort of screamed, although I don't really know what I'd class as Jimmy screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, um... it's kind of his singing, really. It's it's Jimmy. He's awesome. It's, it's Jimmy. Like... The, but the point is, he again, it sounds very violent. And it's just sort of out there. And it's sort of just yeah. very different to anything most people have ever listened to. But it's heralded as one of their best songs. And it's got a lot of meaning. Um, Whilst you feed off others' insecurities, you stand in front of me and bite the hand that feeds. So basically, constantly, as the line says, feeding off other people's insecurities and biting the hand that feeds. So, you know the government's handing out benefits and that sort of things. People are just going for it. You're taking it. And then the chorus, I've had enough. It's time for something real. I don't respect the words you're speaking. It's, it's all about really feeding off the country, feeding off other people, not giving anything back. And again, it sounds really violent. People going, Oh no, it's just screamer. There's nothing special about it, but it's all about, you know, sending people off to Iraq for no reason at all. Arguably, um, all the way from the east to the west, we've got this high society looking down on their very foundation, reminding us that our actions are the cause of all their problems, pointing their fingers in every direction, blaming their own nation for who wins elections, and they've never contributed a thing to the country they love to criticize. Right there. That... Right there, that was like... That was like... I was like singing that in my head with you because it's all talk singing, but still... Yeah, but it sums yeah. up the meaning of the song. It's, yeah, pretty much. It's laid out in front of you. It's... I don't even need to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you haven't guessed by now, we are both very avid Avenged fans. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going through a phase of almost 100% listening to Avenged, and I can't really avoid it, but that's fine. It just sounds so good in my car. But yeah, that's. I think that's basically where we're at. I, I, I feel us looping a little bit. Yeah. I, th- I think we've really covered the topic there. I Pretty hope... much. Like, Yeah, I guess the main thing that we have to learn from this... <laughs> lesson of the day, kids. The lesson Learning of the day, objectives. kids, is that you should never judge a book by its cover because this sounds really cheesy. That's basically <laughs> where we're at. <laughs> basically, regardless of what genre it is, and I am making a conscious effort to do this myself with electronic stuff because I admit I do have a bit of a, a prejudice towards things like electronic and dubstep and stuff because... Some of it does have good tone and rhythm, but I just, it, as we, I think, hit last week, if I can't hear, you know, the strum of a guitar or bang of a drum, again, it's, it's, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't fit with me properly. So, yeah, that's, that's where <laughs> I'm at, basically. Don't, don't judge the music just because of how it sounds. Think about it. 95% of music has a meaning behind it. There's always a reason the artists have thought about it. To use the example of Avenged, they locked themselves in a room for about four weeks or so like to write Avenged Sevenfold, their t- self-titled album. Some of them went away, sat on their own and did it. They weren't just sitting there in the room going, bam, here's some music, let's do it. <clears throat> this riff sounds good, let's get some pointless lyrics and shove it in there. No, they've thought about it, they've got meaning for every song. If you go and watch some of the, the makings of any album... They will always tell you, this is where we've got our inspirations from. This song is about this. We're not just saying it to give you some sort of you know, BS to cover up why we've written this song. There is meaning yeah, to much. it. It's, yeah, just like like City and Color. Um, actually, I think the way City and Color writes songs is I think the way most people should write songs. Write songs, like write a specific song when you're in the mood for writing that specific song. Yes. Don't feel like it anymore. Take a break. Like It takes him so long to write songs because... He would only write when the time felt right. So it's like, I'm feeling sad. I'm going to write a sad song. 
And then as he's writing it, it's like, oh, I'm not sad anymore. Well. That was good. I guess I'll take a break for a couple of months until I'm sad again. <laughs> and yeah, that's basically where we're at. That is, that's how you get quality music. You, That's the thing. Yeah. Popular bands and artists get that way because I guess their music is genuine in, in most cases. Yeah. I have certain tolerance <clears throat> levels for certain artists that are up there that shouldn't be. But most successful artists, something like Maiden that's been going for 30 years, still manages to remain current, still manages to hit number ones in many, many countries. They remain current because their music is genuine. Yeah. yeah they mean much. what they write. Yeah. And that's how you make good music. If you know, if you don't mean what you write, you can hear it in the music that it's not, that it's forced and it's not, it's not meant. Like with City of yeah. City in Colour, they're successful and they mean their music. Or he means his music. He means rather. his music, oh yes. <laughs> it's as simple as that, really. And with that, eat your vegetables, stay in school, and don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, basically, yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, if you enjoyed it, likes and subscribes are fantastic things to do to help us out. Um, comments, please. Also, yes, comment. Give us suggestions. Give us ideas as to what we could use. Argue against in our, us. Prove in our, wrong. yeah, argue against us. Like, prove, yeah, prove us wrong. Like, if you have an opinion, let us, let us have it. Please give us your worst. But yeah, and, no, really. Uh, and suggestions. Please, um, we like them. Yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. See you guys. Bye bye.